Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here, founder of Data Driven and the Jeffalytics blog, and I want to welcome you to our Google Ads Bootcamp. Thanks for joining us on this journey, and we're going to share with you some insights that I learned along the way to growing a very successful business advertising on Google Ads. In this video, we are going to share my five rules for profit-driven advertising and how you can take a data-driven approach to everything you do within Google Ads because that is truly the secret sauce to performing well when it comes to advertising. You need to make sure that you understand what data you can collect, how to make sense of it, and how you can use it to your advantage to turn out profits. And many people will often find that they fail advertising on Google Ads because they have so much focus on trusting what Google does and they don't focus on what's important to their business. And so in the videos of this bootcamp, we are gonna walk you through each step that you need to take to make sure you are taking a profit-driven approach to advertising on Google and the levers you can pull in order to get the best results. And so let's get into it. Here are my five best tips for advertising in a profitable way on Google Ads. We're gonna talk about your online advertising in just a minute here, but first, I wanna give Google a pat on the back because the global impact of Google advertising is undeniable. And in fact, if you ever tried to deny it, Google has a website out there and they have proven out that their economic impact is pretty tremendous. We're talking hundreds of billions of dollars in economic impact that comes from Google. And that's pretty great, right? Sure it is. But we also need to remind ourselves that Google is not a charity. Google is doing this for their own bottom line. If we look at Google's financial statements here, we can see that Google generates over $100 billion a year in revenue. And that is nothing to slouch at either. And if you were to crunch the numbers here, you would see the average Google advertiser has 155% return on their Google advertising investment. And that means that for every dollar that you spend with Google advertising as an advertiser, you're expected to receive $2.55 back. That's not bad at all. And in fact, if you could turn on Google Ads right now, run some ads and get those results, you'd probably be in pretty good shape. You'd probably be pretty happy with the results and you probably wouldn't need to watch this boot camp. However, it's not really that easy. The truth is that these returns are not typical and they're not very easy to achieve. In fact, many advertisers, especially those just getting started out, struggle to advertise profitably on Google Ads. They're not seeing a positive return. And what that means is that many advertisers spend that $1 on Google advertising and they get $1 or less back. And on a long enough timeline, this is not just unsustainable. It's something that will actually make you lose money and make advertising one of the worst parts of your business. And so if you don't learn to advertise on Google the right way, you might lose money. And on the other hand, when you even things out, there's actually quite a few advertisers out there who spend a dollar and they make $5 back $10 back, or even more than that. And I know that for a fact because I've spent over $20 million with Google Ads. And that's a lot of clicks, a lot of results that I've been able to generate through Google Ads. And when I add up the economic activity from the advertising I've done on Google, I've generated over a billion dollars in economic impact from advertising on Google on behalf of my clients. So how have I been able to achieve such effective results when the average advertiser either breaks even or loses money? Well, that's what I wanna show you in this bootcamp training series. By simply watching this bootcamp series all the way to the end, you will discover my most powerful secrets about advertising effectively with Google Ads. Secrets like how to set realistic performance goals without any history of advertising successfully on Google exactly how you can earn positive results from your advertising budget without breaking the bank. Why avoiding one of the most recommended techniques from Google and doing it your own way can skyrocket your chances of success by over 200%. I'm also gonna show you an under the radar technique for generating the best keywords without sacrificing your results using the same methods as all the top Google Ads professionals. And finally, the number one killer against your results with Google Ads and how you can avoid this mistake. And the good news is if you're making this mistake right now, even the pros do it. But if you follow along on this boot camp, if you follow along with my lessons, we are going to show you how you can avoid this mistake for yourself. So what are my five rules for profit-driven advertising on the Google Ads platform? The first one is be clear with your advertising goals before you spend any money with Google. 
make sure you have a very clear understanding as to what you're going to do before you start spending money on Google, before you have them charging your credit card automatically for the right to advertise on their network. Prepare your all-in numbers for advertising and present a business case. Number three, I'm going to show you how to structure your account to take advantage of Google's unique advertising system. Number four, I'm going to show you my technique for keyword generation that only professionals use. Amateurs need not apply. Amateurs don't use this technique, and that is why they lose money more often than not when it comes to advertising on Google. And finally, number five, implement a process for consistently driving results month after month. And in this first lesson, we are going to work on your advertising goals. But I'm going to warn you first, this is very in-depth. This isn't one of those web articles that don't tell you anything about how this stuff gets done. I'm going to show you my exact process for setting goals and determining if they're realistic. And I'm going to give you a reality check to understand, is advertising going to be working for you? And is this the right place to be going? So let's start with a reality check. Are you going to be one of those people who struggles with their advertising? Or are you going to be one of those five to 10 Xers, those people who are able to get outsized results from their advertising because they deploy the techniques that are usually only reserved for professionals? And of course, I know you want the five to 10 X returns, but is that realistic? Is that something that you can expect? Let's talk about it. Let me ask you some business questions. Do you know how much revenue you generate when you sell your product or service? How much is a sale worth to you? You will need to know that if you want to advertise profitably. Has your business been successful generating leads or sales online, whether it's through blog posts, advertising, or simply emailing people and letting them know what you have to offer? Is online working for your business right now? When you do generate a lead, do you have a sales process that you can use to close those deals? Do you have somebody who answers the phone if you generate a phone call? Do you have somebody who responds to the forms that are filled out on your website every time somebody wants to invest in your product or service? Are your competitors advertising online, specifically with Google Ads? One thing you'll find is that if you're the only person out there advertising in your niche, it may be that Google Ads is not working for your industry, or maybe they're just really far behind. And as we go through and set your goals, you can make that determination based on the numbers you see from Google's own systems. Do your customers love you? Do you have a list of customers who would be willing to give testimonials on your landing pages? or be willing to walk through your website right now and tell you what they like and what they don't like about the website so you can make improvements for your future advertising. And the last question I have for you is, do you have a high lifetime value of your customer? Are they purchasing one time and one time only? Or is somebody gonna be purchasing over and over again? Because that does impact how much money you're willing to spend on your advertising. You may not be profitable on the first sale, but if somebody buys over and over again, you're probably willing to sacrifice some short-term profits for the long-term benefit of having repeat customers. Here's another question for you. What do you expect to get out of advertising on Google? And I would encourage you to get a piece of paper and write this down or type it into a spreadsheet. The first question I have for you is how many conversions do you expect to get a month? And when I say conversion, I either mean a lead or a sale, or both, depending on how your business runs. The next one is, what amount are you willing to pay for those conversions, for those events to happen for your business? And rather than make you do all the work, I've prepared even more for you in this video to see if advertising makes sense for you. And there's gonna be two resources we have to get started. The first one is called Google Keyword Planner. Now, Google Keyword Planner is something where if you sign up for a Google Ads account and you put your credit card on file, then Google will allow you to search their keyword planner and to generate a list of keyword ideas, as well as the costs and the number of searches you can expect each month for those keywords. And the second resource is in the My Resources section on Data Driven, and that's My Advertising Goals Model Spreadsheet. You can download that and follow along. Otherwise, if you just want to see how it's done, you want to see me do it, I'm going to open up that spreadsheet in just a second here, and we are going to go through some scenarios. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and take a look at how all this comes together. Okay, so here I am in Google Ads. If I go to Tools and then I go to the Keyword Planner, that's how I'm gonna get started with the keyword research. And I'm gonna go to Find Keywords here, and I'm gonna type in just several keywords related to my PPC training course. This is my Google Ads certification course and my course that teaches people in depth how to use Google Ads. And so I've gone ahead and seeded some keywords in here. So when I put in my keywords, you can see several things in here. One is that Google is recommending that I try other keywords. Now you might notice here that if I'm selling a Google Ads training course, Google Analytics, SEO, digital marketing, these things are way too broad. 
and they would not do very well in advertising for a certification course. The only thing that these keywords would do is they would give Google more of my money and I would not get very good results. You wanna be as relevant as possible. You wanna be very, very specific with your keywords. Otherwise, you're not gonna do very well with advertising. So I usually ignore these unless I'm in a very broad industry category or I'm trying to create general awareness and I don't have a return on investment goal when it comes to sales. So be careful using Google suggestions. And this is something that I'll tell you all along anytime that you're searching for keywords. Be careful with Google suggestions and take a look at yours and see what they show you. Now you can see here, we have my terms in here and then Google's giving us ideas as well. And as we can see, we have quite a few different ideas that are available. Now you could go through and go through every one of these ideas if you wanted to, but I'd rather just go ahead and download the keyword ideas and work with them in a spreadsheet. And so if you were to go ahead and download that spreadsheet, you're gonna see a CSV file similar to this one. This one is obviously based on my terms and I would encourage you to do this with your own terms. And what I would recommend doing is taking these keywords, just highlighting them all and highlighting all the rows, going all the way to the bottom. This is one of those boring things where I'm selecting everything and I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna go ahead and paste this into my model. So what is this model that we have here? What is this beautiful looking spreadsheet we have? The first thing you'll notice is that there's two tabs. One is for my keyword data. This is the raw data. The other one is the ROI model that is formatted. So I'm just gonna paste in my raw data from that CSV file. And as you can see, it's updated here and it's the same data because I had already downloaded the spreadsheet. But if you were to do it for your terms and your own focus area, you'll notice that these things are a little bit different. And maybe we'll do that at the end of this video if we have some time. And so let's go to the Google Ads ROI model tab. Now, when you're looking at the sheet, just note a few things. The first thing you see is that anything in gold is a variable. And if you want to, you can click on that variable and you can put in whatever number you want. So I asked you for the exercise earlier to write down how many leads you wanna get and how much you wanna pay for those leads with Google Advertising. Now, if we're talking about my PPC course, for example, something that retails for $500, if I were advertising for it on Google, then my cost per sale has to be at a break-even point. Let's call it $500 per sale. And I'm in general, I'm thinking, okay, if I can get 20 leads at $250 and half of them turn into sales, then I should be able to get 10 sales per month. Now, these are just numbers that I've pulled off the top of my head. These are not vetted based on the actual numbers from the Google keyword tool. And that's what I want you to do as well. I don't want you to have perfect numbers. I want you to take your dream scenario, what you think can happen, and then cross-reference it across what Google thinks is possible. And that's what we're doing in this second section here. We have Google Ads keyword metrics. So these first ones are all your inputs. You put it in there yourself and you choose what numbers you put in there. And you can adjust them. And I expect that you will adjust them as you play around with the spreadsheet as you see how things look, you might come up or down on your numbers. And you might say, okay, well, maybe these numbers are not realistic. Maybe advertising is not a good idea. Or the other thing you might say is, hey, maybe we can get some really profitable ads and we can even spend more with Google because we have a lot of leeway with what our expectations are. And I do expect that those of you watching are gonna have both reactions to what you see with your own numbers in place. And that's why I really encourage you to do this with your own numbers, with your own industry that you're looking at, because that's gonna be the most meaningful way to do things. I'm happy to give my business as a guideline, but obviously your numbers are gonna be much more meaningful to you when it's based on your own reality, your own organization, or your own business. So this middle part here is your Google Ads keyword metrics. Now this number right here, notice it's not gold because it's not a variable. It is actually just the sum of every single one of our keyword data points. So you put in your own keywords and it's gonna pull in the average monthly searches for your keywords that you put in there. And so that's the sum of those numbers. See, we have 36,000 searches per month. Now expected click-through rate, that is gold because I'm just putting in any number for a click-through rate. Now on average, I've seen that an average click-through rate is 2%, but it could be much higher or much lower than that depending on your industry, your focus area, what you're going after. And so 2% is just my guideline. You can change that if you want to, but if you're not sure what click-through rate even means or what to expect there, I would just keep it at 2%. Then we have here the expected website sessions from PPC. This is simply the 2% going into the number of searches per month. So if I get 2% of all searches, which is a reasonable number, then I can expect 735 people coming to my website. 
Now, how much can I expect per click? In this one, I'm taking the average of the low number. So in your export file, you have the low top of page bid and you have the high top of page bid. And we're gonna go ahead and average out the low and the high. And as you can see here, there's a very big discrepancy between the low and the high. Now, if you're a very efficient advertiser, you're probably gonna to wanna to be towards that low range. And in fact, I almost always go towards that low range. I never wanna to go towards the high range because it's really hard, as you can see once we crunch these numbers, to get results when you're at the very, very high range of cost per click. You're basically overbidding to be in the first position and it's really hard unless you have a crazy lifetime value on your customer or you have a really, really good sales team, it's really hard to see that return. And so I usually err towards the low cost per click range. Now, if you want to, I have this little waiting in here, and that is if you want to wait more towards the low end of the range, what I'd recommend you do is you put this number to be a little bit lower. So you're gonna say, I want 60% of the average as opposed to 100% of the average. And the average is simply the average between this one and this one. So I'm gonna put this down to 60%. And you can see now that we actually would be spending a lot less money because we have less cost per click. And then this is simply the average of these two numbers times the number of website sessions we can expect. And then the cost per click we're lowering because we're only going after a smaller percentage of them. So that's how this works. And this is how we can establish how much money we think we can spend with Google ads when it comes to our own numbers. Now, this is one of those things where we're running this before we've run any advertising and we're running this based on Google's tool, which is a one size fits all tool for all advertisers. They're not taking into account your own numbers. They're just saying in general, this is what you can expect. Now I have personally found with really good management of Google ads, your numbers can be much closer to the low range and get the volumes you're looking for. And in fact, the total searches per month Google always to me seems to underestimate that. So you might find that your total searches per month might be more like 50,000 for these keyword terms or 100,000 or even more than that. And so there's gonna be some leeway here. There's gonna be some ways to look at this data and to make improvements to it or to look at it a little bit differently. But really we're just trying to prove whether our goals are realistic within some kind of range of acceptability right now. We're not saying this is gonna be the definitive way that you're gonna look at keywords. So this is just a way of consolidating the data that Google provides you and putting some of your own business rules, some of your own knowledge about your business into it as well. And so that's what I've done here. I basically figured that I could spend about $5,000 in keyword clicks around PPC terms. Now let's see, am I gonna be potentially getting the number of leads that I'm looking for? I want 20 leads and I want 10 sales per month and I wanna spend 250 max and 500 max. So let's take a look at how this thing works. So if my website conversion rate is 5%, meaning that five out of every 100 people who go to my site from this click through, if it's 5%, then I'm gonna get 37 leads. Okay, that's gonna be above my 20, that's good news. And if I'm paying 140, which is you can see here, we're at 140 based on our calculation here, and that's just simply taking monthly spend and dividing it into our number of leads. And this is just a hidden field that shows our number of leads right there. And so that's how we can do it. And we can basically take the number 250 minus the 140. And that's how we can tell if our cost per lead is in an acceptable range or not. This is based on common website numbers and based on the numbers that I put in there for lead generation rates and conversion rates when it comes to sales. And this is not the greatest example because and this is assuming that if somebody becomes a lead, that 50% of them are going to become sales. They're going to be somebody who ends up purchasing. Now, anybody who knows about lead generation and lead funnels probably thinks that 50% is insane. And I would agree with that. It's a pretty, pretty lofty number. I've seen conversion rates more like 20%, 10%. So if you put that in place, you can see, okay, 20%. If I have a 20% close rate, I'm only getting seven sales. I'm below my number here and it's costing me $700 per sale as opposed to the 500 that I expect. So I'm actually at a deficit for sales unless I can close at something like 25, 30%. And so I'm looking at a deficit for sales unless I can close at 30% or so. Now you can play with your numbers. You might already know your conversion rate or you might need to look it up. But basically, if I'm paying for clicks from Google, I want to get them to take the action I need them to take as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible, so that I can get my numbers to add up. Now there's some businesses out there that might be able to capture leads at a much higher rate. If you're sending somebody to 
your landing page that has a contact form as well as a phone number, for example, I've seen conversion rates in the 20% range. And so you're getting a lot of leads. And if your sales close rate is more like 10%, meaning you're getting a lot of leads, but they're not the highest quality because you're focusing on lead capture, you can still see here that you're getting a lot more sales and you're within your acceptable range. And that's really how this stuff all plays together. Basically, you can optimize around the number of clicks you get from Google by increasing your click-through rate. So if we made this 3%, as you can see here, that's just giving a lot more website sessions coming in. We can also optimize around how much money we're willing to pay per click. So if we kept this at 100%, we're gonna see that's pretty high and we actually lose money on it. But if we do lower our cost per click to say 50% of the average range, now we're starting to see this is much more profitable and we're generating a significant number of leads. If our lead capture doesn't involve phone calls or if we're just collecting a form, maybe that goes down to 10%. And you can see here, if we have a 10% lead capture rate and a 10% sales close rate, we actually lose money on each sale or we're not within our range. Now there are times where you could lose money on a sale and then the customer lifetime value, somebody buying more than one time actually puts you profitable again. Those are all things that you can sort through as you learn more about your business. And in that case, you might be able to pay more per sale if you have a high lifetime value. So say that your leads are worth this much, but the cost per sale, you're willing to spend $1,000 because you know they're gonna be valuable. Now pretty much any number you put through here is gonna be much more likely to be successful because you have accounted for it in your lifetime value. And so these things all play together. And what this is meant to do is it's meant to tell you, is it reasonable to advertise on Google? Now I would say that for some of you, it's probably not reasonable if you wanna make a profit immediately from your current sales funnel. And the reason why is because most people don't know these numbers or these numbers are not tweaked to the point where they're really consistently generating profitable activity. And so if you wanna advertise and do well with Google, it might not be just about getting a higher click-through rate or spending less per click. You might need to fix your entire sales process and your sales funnel. And I've seen this happen many times. There are a lot of companies that I work with who I can get the numbers to look really good from Google. I can manage Google really well, and I'm gonna teach you how to manage Google really well as well through this bootcamp. But no matter what you do here, if your sales metrics, if your lead metrics are not in place, if they're not working on all cylinders, you're gonna have a hard time turning a profit. And so I don't want you to get too wrapped up in this method. I don't want you to get too concerned about the numbers that you see here, but this is a good quick self-test to see, is it reasonable for me to expect that I'm gonna get results from Google? So let's go back to our keyword planner and let's try another set of ideas. So I'm gonna say tax attorney, tax, tax law, tax lawyer. Put in some stuff around attorneys and lawyers and just see if a professional service business, how different it is with the average cost per click and whether it would be profitable for them to advertise as well. So I put those numbers in there. As you can see, we're getting some more generic recommendations. These are not ones that I would wanna advertise on. This is really stuff for accountants, not for the attorneys themselves. And you can see there's a bunch of different things in here that come along. And if I wanted to, I can download these keyword ideas. We have over a thousand keyword ideas here. And so we have all of our keywords here. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy all this data that we have. Go a thousand rows deep and make sure that I have them all. And I'm gonna drop this into our keyword data spreadsheet. Now, if you remember, I made this formula pretty generous to handle over 2000 keywords. So this shouldn't cause a major problem. And let's just drop it in there and see what we get. So as you can see here, our goals haven't changed, but obviously a tax attorney could probably pay way more for a lead. They're probably gonna say that a lead is worth $1,000 minimum and that the average cost per sale, they're willing to pay $5,000 to get a sale. Now these people might be generating $20,000 to $100,000 to a million dollars or more in client fees when they find the right client. And so they don't need a lot of leads, but they're willing to pay a lot for it. So let's go back to our average 2% click-through rate. We have 251,000 searches per month, much more. You can get 5,000 people to our site and the cost per click range is not too bad. It's actually pretty good. I'm gonna bump this back up to our 100%. And they're potentially, these people could be paying $81,000 per month. Now, if they get 500 leads, that's pretty crazy to think that they're gonna get 500 leads. I find that services that are high-end get much fewer leads. So their conversion rate might be 2%, which is the average conversion rate for the internet. 
So they're gonna get 101 leads and then maybe their close rate is much higher. I find that if you're getting 2% just really high quality leads, maybe your conversion rate should be more like 35%. Now, as you can see here, 35% close rate's pretty good. We even put that to 20%. They're making money off of their Google ads. They're beating the number of sales they're looking for. They're doing pretty well in this scenario. And so again, this is not a perfect analysis of that business. I'm not a tax attorney. I've never worked at a tax attorney company or a firm. So I don't really know if these numbers are realistic or not. But I do know that when you go through and you look at and you put the numbers in place and you spell this out for your own business using Google's real data, you are gonna have an idea as to whether this is realistic or not pretty quickly. And you're gonna know because you're gonna put in your own numbers here you're gonna say, okay, well, can we live with this or not? And then you might make adjustments. In fact, you will make adjustments because this is not something that's gonna be perfectly aligned as you go forward. If you're an e-commerce site, then your lead and your conversions are probably gonna be the same thing. So you might actually have a much higher sales rate. It might be 100% because everybody who fills out a form is actually somebody who buys. If you're a different type of company and you capture a lot of leads, but then you don't sell many of them because you're very selective, or you only work with certain types of people. For example, a tax attorney, they might only work with international clients. They might only work with clients who need help with state, federal, and local. There's all kinds of different things they could do. You might need somebody who specializes in one area or somebody who specializes in another. And so you put that together and you can tailor it for your own focus area. That's really what's important here is that I'm giving you a framework you can use, a framework that I've used to help prove the value and to help understand our goals realistic and a really quick self test, something that you can download from Google and put the numbers in there. And then you can determine, okay, well, if this is realistic, are we gonna go forward with this? And how much are we gonna put into our budget? And budgets are something we're gonna talk about in our next lesson in this bootcamp. So that's how this Google Advertising Goals spreadsheet works. You can quickly tell by downloading data from Keyword Planner and putting the numbers in here, your own numbers, realistic numbers, you can tell if this is going to work or not, or at least if it's in the range of something that could be profitable or help you achieve your goals. And to be honest, most people can be profitable in advertising if they focus on the right areas. But if you overspend, if you are not very efficient in what you do, and you just throw money at a problem, it's going to catch up with you at some point in time. So this is where this spreadsheet helps you understand, are you realistic? And are the adjustments you're going to make help you get closer to the results you're looking for? So let's finish up this lesson by talking about a few reminders. First of all, this is just an exercise and there's a lot of room for you to make improvements to what you're doing. Google's numbers are often inaccurate and you can find cheaper clicks and more search volume over time. Usually the search volume is underestimated and the cost per click is overestimated, at least from my experience. The other thing is that this model is aggregated across all keywords. And the thing is all keywords don't behave the same way. You might find that one keyword converts at 15% and one converts at 0% and never gets a conversion. And so when you get more advanced, when you get further along, you're gonna run these models based on your own data, not based on the results just from Google Keyword Planner. Now, if you're worried about getting this thing right and having it perfect, you're not gonna know all the numbers at the top of your head. And I don't want you to let perfect get in the way of good enough. This is an estimating tool. It's helping you understand if you're even in the same league or the same ballpark as what you might expect. Don't get too worried about it. These numbers will never be perfect. And in fact, you want them to be a little bit imperfect so you can go back and look at the prediction you had and see how well you did and see how much you improved upon your original prediction once you master the techniques that I teach for managing Google Ads. And this is yours now. You can change anything that you see in the advertising goal model to fit your needs. You can add stuff, you can change stuff, you can put your own logo on there. Whatever you wanna do, this is yours. This is my gift to you. And I'm very happy to answer your specific questions that you have in the comments. And to summarize what we did in this exercise, we entered your seed keywords into the Google Keyword Planner. We downloaded the advertising model from My Data Driven. We exported your keyword ideas from the Keyword Planner and put them into the spreadsheet under the Keywords tab. You're gonna enter your data points. Obviously, you're gonna do it to the best of your ability to see how the numbers start to come together and how they look. And we are here standing by, ready to answer any questions you have about this model. Okay, so that's it. You've made it through the first part of the bootcamp. And I'm really excited for our next video because it is the most popular piece of content that I've ever created on Google Ads. 
and that is getting an understanding of what your budget should be and how you can use the numbers to advertise profitably on Google Ads. And so I'm gonna leave you with this. There's one thing that I want you to do when it comes to this video and taking action. Leave a comment to let me know what your plans are for Google advertising, what your goals are, and what you're looking to achieve. My team reviews each of the comments and we'll give you some words of encouragement to get you going along your path towards profitability and data-driven Google Ads results.